Okay, should be going, Sal. Headphones on to make sure. And this looks good. Okay, Sal, we are live. Are you ready, sir? I am ready. Welcome to Just Curious Media. This is That's a Crime. I'm Jason Connell. And I'm Sal Rodriguez. All right, Sal, we are back for another crime. Yeah, and an interesting one because it's, Although it turns out to be a crime, it is, yeah. well, as a spoiler, it's an accident. It's an accident that becomes a crime. That's right. That's right. And I stumbled on this by mistake. I think yeah. I heard of this happening years ago, decades ago, yeah. and then was looking up a movie because we're going to get into everything and then did a deep dive and stumbled on it and was just taken aback. And I figured we had to cover it because it's worthy. And I've been such a big fan of the, the family for all sure. these years. I've been doing a deep dive of my own on some of his fathers who we're going to speak, talk about his filmography. And it just was like, oh, we've got to do this. And the more I dug, the more I figured had to come to this episode. Yeah, this is uh, Hollywood dynasties we're yes. talking about here. Yeah, because today we are covering Giancarlo Coppola, Fatal Boating Accident, 1986. Yeah. And you put this on my radar. I, I do vaguely remember some sort of news clippings from years past. Yeah. Vaguely. But yeah, this puts it all in perspective. Uh, but no, I did not know about this. And, and this is this is pretty huge. Huge. I mean, this is an earlier era. Right. So there's not a lot out there. And I just stumbled on it. So essentially, I was looking a movie up and then it led me to like, wait, who's this person in relation to? Because you see the Coppola name, you know, all over the place. Mo more often than not, they're related. And sure. I want to save exactly what I discovered till later or who I'm talking about. But, uh, but here we are. I stumbled on this, read through it, and just figured we had to cover it. And yes, it is an accident. We haven't done very many accidents. There was one recently yeah. on, on the Henry Ruggs fatal accident in uh, vegas when he yes. killed a woman and her dog which is very tragic and it's very recent though i mean that's this year yeah this is 1986 yeah so uh and just before we get started i just started looking up some data on boating accidents and so since 2021 is still happening yeah in the u.s in 2020 there were 3,191 injuries 767 deaths related to boating accidents. It's like, I had no idea those numbers are staggering, Sal. Yeah. And you know, when you think of boating, I know if I think of boating or anything related to the water, my main thought is drowning. I'm right. not the, the strongest swimmer. That's my main concern is, is the drowning, but there's a whole lot more to consider besides yeah. just drowning. Now, a lot of these boating accidents could be drownings, of course, sure. but uh, yeah, that's a lot. And I mean, I guess it makes sense. There's so many bodies of water. There's Listen, when I was younger and you're going out on boats with younger people, Memorial Day, you know, holidays, yeah. it's like you'd look at a boat and think, oh, it's like six kids in there and they're drinking and kids being like just old enough to drink or just sure. not old enough to drink. Oh, yeah. And there's cops out there on the water looking for that bad motorist driving. I mean, you don't yeah. have if you don't have life, life vest on or if yes. you're drinking there, you're in trouble and they're monitoring the best they can. But uh yeah, big numbers. And um, yeah, this is a very tragic episode, but again, it deals with the dynasty and there is a silver lining, which we will save for the very end. If there is a silver lining, I mean, there isn't, there isn't, right? Well, some sort of light at the end of the tunnel, right? That's a, that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Yes. So the backstory on Giancarlo Coppola, he was born on September 17th, 1963, and was the oldest child of legendary director Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. Of course, you know the name, Sal, very well. The Godfather, The Godfather Part Two, The Conversation, Apocalypse Now, The Cotton Club, The Outsiders, Rumblefish, and many more. Sure. Yeah. Huge name. What, what's your favorite in the bunch there? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, prone to uh, say The Outsiders. There you uh, go. A, a lot of good memories of The Outsiders when I was, uh, when I was young. I go with The Godfathers, but of course... The Outsiders and Rumblefish are very dear to my heart because they were filmed in my hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, I so, didn't know Rumblefish was filmed yeah. there too. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're written by S.C. Hinton. She was a Tulsa, and that's what brought the crew there. But nice. uh, moving on. Now, his mother was Eleanor Coppola, who was quite accomplished in her own right, having directed several documentaries, including 
Hearts of Darkness, a filmmaker's apocalypse, which is about Coppola and all he dealt with when making that film, mm. as well as two live action movies, Paris Can Wait and Love is Love is Love. And I've actually seen Paris Can Wait and it's really good. I've recommended it to many friends. So oh. I need to see the other one. So she's kind of, you know, doing her thing. Very creative family, as sure. you already know. Oh, yeah. Now, his brother, Roman Coppola, has directed countless music videos for groups such as Paul McCartney, Moby, Phoenix, Green Day, The Strokes, Daft Punk, Fatboy Slim, and I'm sure many more. And he was also nominated for an Academy Award for co-writing the screenplay of Moonrise Kingdom with Wes Anderson. And if that's not enough, he also played a young Sonny Corleone in Godfather Part Two. Oh, I didn't know that uh, Francis put some of his family in the movie. Oh, yeah. They, he, he sprinkles them in here and there. Yeah, he played the young Sonny Corleone. I remember that. But because they're just little kids. When I, you know, he's sure. young. He's like a child. But, you know, yeah. it's like, hey, yeah, put, put Roman in here. And now to his sister, Sofia Coppola. She's quite a prolific filmmaker and has made waves since her debut, The Virgin Suicides, which I saw in the theater. Then her second film, Lost in Translation, was nominated for three Academy Awards in 2003. Best Screenplay, Best Director, Best Picture, and she won for Best Screenplay. She would later make other such hits as Marie Antoinette and The Bling Ring, among others. She also played a little girl in The Outsiders. I remember wow. that. She played Patty's sister in Rumblefish and Marie Corleone in and The Godfather Part Three, And that was a bigger role. It was supposed to be Wynonna Ryder who dropped out. So, oh. I mean, this is Sofia Coppola's probably biggest acting gig. She plays a major pivotal role in that movie. So- Wow, I did not know that. I, I've seen Lost in Translation, oh, yeah. but I, I don't know the rest of her work. I saw that in the theater as well. So if that's not enough with the family and the talent that be, I'm gonna mention two more, her cousins, or sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, his cousins, apologies. Yes. Jason Schwartzman and Nicolas Cage, whose credits go on and on and on and on. So sure, sure. you can tell that this is, you know, Francis paved the way for everyone else to be in the arts and be successful in the arts and no exception with Giancarlo because we'll get into his career as well. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I think you're born into some pressure there. You know, there's some. Well, there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better Well, he's deliver. the oldest. So these other two accomplished this after his passing. Okay. Uh, you know, keep, you know, he was definitely first one out of the gate leading the way. Oh, because he was the oldest. Yes. And has the track tragic accident and they yes. carried on, you know, maybe they were also driven for him as well. That you can know? happen. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure. It's a lot of that. So Giancarlo was working in the family business like his siblings and appeared in some of his father's films and the Godfather, he appeared with his brother, Roman, as the two sons of Robert Duvall's Tom Hagen's character. I remember those kids running around as well. Didn't oh, wow. know it was John Carlo and Roman. Sure. He also played a boy in church in the conversation and cousin James in Rumblefish. Now I have not seen Rumblefish in years. Now I've got to go see it again. Yeah. And, and see who exactly who cousin James is. I'm sure it's a small role, but still it's a great film loaded with talent and film in Tulsa. In addition to that, he was an associate producer on Rumblefish and The Outsiders and the second unit director on The Cotton Club, which is also, of course, his father's film. So you could tell that he was probably doing that producer path, you know, unlike uh, yeah, yeah. Roman and Sophia. And I also want to give a shout out to second unit uh, people, Absolutely. second unit directors, because, you know, I just for, in, in case somebody out there listening doesn't know, you know, so you got right. the first unit, which is, you know, if the main star is going to do a scene main cast, yeah. main cast, they're going to film that. And then they want to take advantage of the schedule, take advantage of the daylight, the weather. So they'll send a second unit out maybe to film some car chases right. or maybe some street scenes or whatever. So uh, I have worked uh, under the directorship of uh, some second units. And it's very interesting because yeah. there's uh, oftentimes a lot of action going on in second units. And many of them go on to become directors, very accomplished directors, because it's a lot. It's a, you know, it's a heavy burden, especially on a bigger movie, your second unit. That's a ton of pressure. Yeah. Hey, we need some pickup shots, grab these guys or whatever. So yeah, he was doing that. And just prior to his death, Sal, director Penny Marshall, rest in peace, had hired him to work second unit on her film, Jumpin' Jack Flash. Nice with Whoopi so you Goldberg. Could see, yeah. He was definitely going this path. And maybe he would have been a director as well. Sure. But he's got some producer chops. He's done some acting and he's doing lots of second unit things. Yeah. So obviously 
tragic that you could just see the path that he was on, you know, what his family's gone on to do. Giancarlo would have been in the midst and there was probably many movies that we'll never get because sure. he's not with us. Sure. Yeah. So now to the accident, there's not a ton on this accident. Unfortunately, that's why we really wanted to paint a big picture of yeah. Giancarlo and the legacy. Well, you mentioned the, the era. If this were to happen today, there most likely would have oh, been some video footage. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And his life would have been more documented online. Yes. Yeah. There wasn't a lot for me to go off of and that's fine, but I, this, mm. this is all I have. Yeah. So on May 26th, 1986, John Carlo Coppola, who was 22 years old. So, wow. So ridiculously young. Oh yeah. And his friend Griffin Patrick O'Neill, who was 21. Now the name, the last name may sound familiar. His parents are Ryan O'Neill and Joanne, Joanna Moore. His sister is Tatum O'Neill. Oh yeah. I believe he's got siblings as well, but that's the name that you would know from all of her acting credits. Oh yeah. They took a break from filming one of Francis Ford Coppola's movies, Gardens of Stone, in which Giancarlo was working on and Griffin was acting in. And let me just say this now, was later replaced. Oh. Just We'll get to that. But yeah. they rented a 14-foot motorboat to enjoy Memorial Day on the South River near Annapolis, Maryland. Sal, you ever been to Maryland or anywhere about? I have not been to Maryland, nor have I ever rented a boat. <sighs> okay. All right. Yeah, I've definitely been to Maryland, not to this particular region, but uh, I have rented a boat, but I was in my 30s or even my mm. 40s. I, I never would even think to rent a boat in my 20s. And I'm shocked that you could do that. Of course, this is the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Because I think they've also changed car rentals. I believe you have to be older now to even rent a car. Okay. Because I think I was renting cars in my early 20s. I don't think I could do that today, let alone a boat. Yeah, exactly. So around 5.15 p.m., three hours into the rental, O'Neill was piloting the boat and attempted to pass between two slow-moving boats. Now, Sal, I know from my years of being on lakes that you absolutely veer on the side of safety and avoid anything that even puts you in the just a little bit of danger. This you just you always veer to the right and stay clear of everything. Yeah. So already this is a bad idea. Well, as as a, a land lubber. As, uh, as they say in the Navy, I think. Um, I didn't have any experience uh, on lakes, rivers, or boating, or jet skis. I had an old girlfriend or family whose family used to go out into the river. And when I arrived there, I'm just ready to have a good time, but I didn't realize how many, how, there's a lot of rules right. you got to follow. There's a lot yes. of safety protocol. Uh, there's sort of a code also. Right. It's, it's an interesting uh, environment. It's, it's, yeah. it, it, it may not be just the, you know, fun and games you're thinking of. There are a lot of rules to follow and namely in the name of safety. You need a responsible captain or someone, you know, ahead of the ship, piloting the ship because yeah, yeah you'll go into some areas. It's like, they don't want you to bring a wake in there. So yes, you yes. like throttle it down. Mm -hmm. I know when I rented a boat in many um, in Minnesota a few years ago, I had Nico on the boat, but as when you took off from the dock, they had one of their employees do that for you and then jump off the boat. And as you got close, they would come to a special pier, jump on the boat and dock it because they just wow. didn't want the responsibility. If you banging into other boats and things, and yeah. you should have seen Nico when that guy jumped on the boat though, <laughs> he was like, he thought we were being attacked. Well, yeah. Like but, a pirate. Uh, Nico being a huge white German shepherd, but he's all fun and games until someone tries to board our vessel. Yeah. But yeah, so that was interesting to see, you know, if you're just having a, you know, your own boat and you're docking it yourself, that's one thing, but you get around a lot of safety provisions. It's like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. They, you know, they know better. Mm -hmm. Even just putting gasoline in a boat can be dangerous. Oh yeah. 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 You know? So, so look out, beware of danger. Again, going back to what I said earlier, not just drowning, drowning is one of, Many uh, concerns, not oh the only one. Yes. So as O'Neill tried to maneuver, you know, between these two boats, he was unaware that the boats were being connected or were connected by a tow line until it was too late. Oh, O'Neill barely had time to duck, but Coppola was struck and thrown onto the deck of the boat by the force of the cable. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just that bad. fast. You know, you get close, like, wait a second, what is this thing I'm seeing? You duck, you hope that your buddy's, you know, looking as well, or maybe you're screaming at him and mm -hmm. it's too late. You, you, 
it, it was too late to veer. You probably, you can't throw it. Rever- There's no brakes. Sure. You know, you got to throttle down and back up. So, I mean, yeah. already this is just, just like that. Witnesses testified that O'Neill was hysterical after the accident, screaming, oh God, please help me. He's dead. Wow. So this is just tragic. Yeah, terrible. And lucky that O'Neill didn't die too. Right. Yeah. I mean, he could have easily, this could have been a double death. Yeah. Double tragedy. And I I don't really know how far apart these two boats were, what he was trying to do. Maybe there was a pretty good distance, but they're both going the same direction. And it's something you just want to avoid. There's no yeah. point in going through that. There's just no upside. Yeah. I think that that this, I would imagine boating is similar to driving. You want to operate defensively. Yes. That's what you want to do. And, and obviously he was not operating defensively. I'm sure he broke some sort of rule or code by even doing what he did. Yeah. So he was most likely in the wrong for even trying such a maneuver. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, absolutely deadly in the end. And just in driving cars as well, you can't assume, let's assume that for a second, that it wasn't being towed. It's two boats going the same direction with a space between them, but yeah. you can't assume they know what you're up to. No. So don't put yourself in that position because they're yeah. not expecting someone to come right in front of them. Even if it wasn't being towed, it could have been an accident. Yeah. So not a good decision. Again, 21 years old, 22 years old in the boat. Young people sometimes don't make the most cautious decision. And immediately my mind goes to alcohol has to be involved. Sure. Right. Yeah. Well, if you think of uh, yeah, two early 20 somethings on a boat, you're going to think that. Sure. But we'll get to that. So yeah. emergency medical teams took Coppola ashore and tried to revive him. He was taken to an Arendale General Hospital where he was pronounced dead at 620 p.m. The medical report stated that Coppola died of head injuries, including a fractured skull and brain damage. He also had abrasions on his left arm, his left side of his face, where he was hit by the tow line. Wow. So, um, yeah, that's just incredibly sad. Um, was it the tow line that caused the fractured skull, I wonder? Or maybe the, he was, maybe, what, he wound up on the deck, maybe hit the deck? Could have been that. Wow. Yeah, because I was trying to get clarity if this cable was... You know, was it a cable? Was it a rope? I read yes. both. You know, tow lines yeah. can be either. That you know, they sure. can be pulled with a rope. If it's a rope, you think, oh well, maybe there's a little more give. That thing is super tight, and you're going, you know, and they're so that's still going to hit you very hard. A cable might have done more damage because it might have like ripped. You know, yeah, it could be head somebody. Yeah, so it could have gotten. Uh, I mean. Yeah, a death is a death, but yeah, it could have been, I guess, what more gruesome could have been a decapitation. Yeah, decapitation. it could have been. Yeah, I, I guess if I if I had to choose death by rope or death by cable, I guess I would choose death by rope, even though there's no evidence that it would be any better. I think it just I just imagine a rope is just a you know teeny tiny bit softer than a metal cable. But there you go. Regardless, rope or cable. Yeah. yeah. Really bad. So authorities said that the boat was traveling about 15 to 20 knots. Now, I don't know my, my knots. I don't know. So, knots, no. Which is 17 to 23 miles an hour. So it's okay. not like crazy fast, right? It's another no. thing I thought these guys are just like, you know, sure. cruising super fast, having a, a Budweiser, a cold one, but it's not very fast. And no. when the accident occurred, alcohol was not a factor. Well, wow. and I was relieved to read that Sal. I, on one hand, it's a relief, but on the other hand, it, it's just then poor judgment. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like on, on one hand, would you rather would you rather have a tragedy from drunkenness or a tragedy from poor judgment? Right. Uh, both bad, you know. Well, it it may have been harder on O'Neill had he also been drunk. Yeah. Right. It just would have been like a double bad. So he would have. And we'll get into that. We'll save what happens. But defense attorney T. Joseph to he stated O'Neill was an experienced boat skipper. He was an inexperienced boat skipper who did not see the rope and made an error in judgment when he there decided to cut between two slow moving power boats. Yeah. Kenneth Wilkins was the person towing the disabled boat to port. He testified that he saw O'Neill's boats just seconds before the accident because he's not assuming someone's going to come through this right now. It probably wasn't so far that it's obvious, but it was probably close enough. They're both doing the same thing. He may even had a flag on his boat. Who knows? 
Yes, the flags. I forgot about that. that something, is some sort of both right? With the there's flags, there's yeah. diver down flags. There had to be yes. something. These yes. guys are just oblivious. But he said that it appeared that the two young men were not aware they were about to hit the rope. So he probably looked up and said, oh, no. And then it just happened. Yeah. You got to expect the unexpected. I've learned that a lot in life. And by the way, I, I've learned the hard way we by expecting the, the unexpected. Uh, you know, I, I like to drive around sometimes. Sometimes I'll drive at night and with, with the lights off, like if I'm through like a park or something mm. and it's, it's not safe, but it creates oh. sort of a spooky factor. OK, so guess what? The other night I'm driving through the park. The lights are off. All of a sudden, I almost plowed into a gate because they had closed the park, a gate in the middle of the road hmm. that I did not see because my lights were off because I was being stupid. Yeah, that was pretty stupid. OK, so no, I was not drinking. OK, All right. my Just point an is error in judgment. My point is you're not expecting a gate to be in the middle of, of a road. Yeah. But there it was almost plowed into it. So here did I am now. Hit it? I'm, had you hit it and been fined, you could have been on That's a Crime. I probably would have been on That's a Crime because already I was, I think, at the park after after hours. So officially oh, yeah, trespassing yeah. would have been. Yeah, it would have been. It, it wasn't good. My point is, is that is that whether driving, whether boating, expect the unexpected. Yeah. And hell, you know what? You could do stupid things at 22 or at 48. You know what? Yeah. Just be careful out there, please. Yeah. So O'Neill was indicted on five misdemeanor counts, including boat manslaughter and reckless and negligent operation of a boat. He was later charged with manslaughter. Well, wow. he pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of neg negligent operation of a boat. He was fined $200 and sentenced to 18 months probation in 1987. Hmm. Now he would eventually receive an 18 day jail sentence for not performing 400 hours of community service as ordered. Yeah. Okay. This is where it starts to get into. Well, yes. What's wrong here? Yeah. He did what? something. He had a major screw up. There was a fatality. You would think you'd be on your best behavior, right? At this right. point. Yeah. Why is he not doing the community service? Well, there's more to that story. Yeah. And again, we mentioned in the beginning that his father was Ryan O'Neill. Yeah. And there's a quote from Ryan O'Neill from 1986. And Sal, why don't you go ahead and read that for us? Yeah. Ryan O'Neill was asked if he thought charges should have been filed. And he replied, Perhaps, but I'd like to see Griffin get off with something mild. I feel terrible about that day. The Coppolas are friends of ours. They go back many years. I know Francis went to Cuba rather than hear about the trial. He couldn't even stay in the U.S. So yeah. apparently Griffin has been estranged from his father due to their longtime volatile relationship. Yeah. And now there's some things that we looked up and we'll go from most recent well, we'll go from the O'Neill thing, but then mo more often, like more, more recent down to, well, I, I don't know if that's exactly true, but we're going to ping pong back and forth on things I found out about Griffin O'Neill, you know, through his life, because it has been a series of issues with him. It's oh, yeah. a pattern. It's a pattern. Yeah. So like go in, ahead. Yeah. In 2007, Ryan O'Neill was arrested for assault after shooting at Griffin during a dispute. Prosecutors decided not to file charges. And right there, I'm having uh, flashbacks of um, Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Marvin Gaye shot by his own father. And this one's more on Ryan, I would say, than Griffin. But uh, yeah, Ryan O'Neill shooting at his own son. Yeah. Yeah. So we're mainly focused on Griffin. This yeah. one was a, an anomaly, but it probably shows you, you know, Gr Griffin has, you know, they've been at heads. They've been, yeah. uh, they, they have not gotten along. And when you're no, shooting no. a weapon at your son, that's not a good thing. Yeah, this is not leave it to Beaver. No. So in 2009, Griffin was even banned by his father from attending the funeral services for Farrah Fawcett. Now, that's not his mother. No. She is the mother of his half-brother, Redmond O'Neill. Okay, I didn't know that. Wow. Uh, and then in 1989, O'Neill pleaded no contest to a drunk driving charge. In 1992, O'Neill pleaded no contest to charges that he shot at his ex-girlfriend's unoccupied car. Strange. Yeah. I think we're, what we're seeing here is, what, a downward spiral of a person, right? Yeah. And it probably started prior to this boating accident. Okay. Yeah. 
The boating accident was a horrible example. Probably changed things a bit, quite a bit. He was fired from the movie he was on. Yeah, I'm sure in some respects he was blacklisted. So I shouldn't say before, but it just seems like him and Ryan had problems all along, and then maybe this just added more fuel to the fire, and uh, it's been a slippery slope for him. Well, you have to think of of all the factors. It's one thing if you accidentally kill some stranger; that's horrible enough. Okay. But then you kill somebody who you know, who your families, your families are friends. I think it becomes even more complex because you have to see these people. If you accidentally kill a stranger, you, you know, you pay your penalty, you do your time, and then you can yeah. theoretically move on. You're not necessarily having to see these people. Friends and family, that's it. You're yeah. seeing their faces the rest of your life. Yeah. So, yeah, we're seeing some, um, I think he's uh, the acting out, as they call it, uh, from pain. Yeah. All right. Take the next one. There's two more. In 2011, O'Neill collided with another car while driving. He was sentenced to 16 months in prison for driving under the influence of drugs. In 2012, O'Neill was arrested for domestic battery after he pushed his wife out of the way in in an attempt to drink and drive. So she's trying to intervene, save him from himself, and he's committing battery against her. You know, the other night, I was outside um, checking on my car. I look and I see this guy kind of drunkenly trying to get into his car. And this guy was wasted. And I was like standing there going, I may have to do something here. It's like, am I just going to see some wasted guy just get in his car? Mm. So I was like kind of, uh, you know, my heels were lifting. I was ready to, 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 to do something. I don't know what I was going to do, really. But I was felt like the need to do something. Luckily, he stumbled away from his car and then walked, I guess, back home. Thank but you. he just left. But I was seconds away thinking I may have to intervene here yeah. on some sort of drunk driving. This is going to be crazy. Oh, man. Scary. So to bring it back to John Carlo, his parents would both make some touching dedications in his honor. Francis Ford Coppola subsequently dedicated Tucker, the man in his dream to John Carlo, which is a great movie, by the way. So I know we talked yeah. before we were. I got to see you haven't seen it. Watch it. It's worth it. It's yeah. wonderful. Love that he dedicated uh, that movie to him. Very touching. And there's a scene in Francis Ford, Francis Ford Coppola's film, Twixt, in which a character dies in a very similar boating accident. Wow. So I hadn't seen this movie, Sal, but I looked it up, this particular scene, found it, and it's exactly true. It's a very wow. similar sequence. So it's like an homage. And this movie came out more recently. Well, 2011, more recently than Tucker. Interesting. And so yeah, maybe Coppola just felt the need to just put it on film and something, pay more homage. I mean, he's older now. So that was really interesting. Mm. The movie has a big cast, but it, and it didn't, didn't draw me in, but I definitely wanted to see that scene. Well, well, let me ask you though, did that scene of the boating accident in the movie Twixt, was that part of the plot or just sort of a, a subplot or something? Well, a character had died on the lake. And okay. then, then he probably just said, well, it was always probably in his mind. Like, yeah. well, it'll be, be that I'll honor. Jean-Claude, wow. So. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, to film that scene, I want to see him filming that scene or talking about that scene, you know, in that, in that sense, like, you know, what that would have been like, how hard, maybe it was very cathartic for him. Yes. I was thinking that, you know, I, um, you, you know, uh, Toys, for example, you know, some people mm-hmm. I met a therapist who involves toys in her therapy office Interesting. With, with, with adults. Right. She has adults grab toys and kind of recreate scenes from their childhood and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So things like uh, toys or art, filmmaking, ways to uh, achieve that catharsis. Yeah. So this was probably um, healing in a way for yeah. Francis. I mean, I didn't say this earlier, but I watched video of Francis Ford Coppola talking about this in the press. Wow. the accident and you could just see that it devastated him and he yeah. actually took responsibility I, I i don't know how or why but mm. you know a parent wants to protect their child from any and everything he had to go on and make that movie finished making that movie fired griffin lost his son and still made the movie now i've seen most of francis for coppola's movies i haven't seen the one he was making yeah. the, garden of, the garden of stones but but anyway i just i can't even imagine what that would have been like Maybe felt responsible because maybe Francis Ford Coppola thought, well, if it weren't for me, they wouldn't have even been hanging out together. Maybe well, exactly. one of those types of things. I gave yeah. him the day off or I, yeah. I should have kept him here. It's probably something like that, you know, yeah. at play. Wow. And Gardens of Stone is the name of it, not Garden of Stones. I, there, I obviously am not that familiar. But, um, and his mother, 
Giancarlo's mother, Eleanor, she created a art installation, a touring art installation entitled Circle of Memory. And it commemorates the life of Giancarlo and has been exhibited, exhibited across the globe. Now, I'd love to see this installation, Sal. Yeah, I'd love to see it too. I need to find out more about this Circle of Memory. Yeah. I wonder if it's still around. Probably, maybe there's some sort of online presence. I mean, all this is still new to me. I, I took all this in yesterday as I was putting the notes together, but yeah, yeah. I would love to check that out. Mm -hmm. And then there's another wonderful dedication, which I'll let you shed light on for us. Yeah, because this is where more of the Coppola name even sounds off more to me personally. Yeah, right, uh, because, <laughs> Yes, there you go. So at the Inglenook Winery owned by Francis and Eleanor in Napa, California, there is a 12 acre vineyard called the Geo Vineyard, named after Giancarlo, which was planted in 1988. So now I'm sitting here thinking, I've had Coppola wine. Yes. Have we possibly drank wine from grapes from the from the Geo Vineyard? I am. If I haven't done it already, I'm going to be doing it now. I'm wow. going to be looking this up. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I mean, this was you mentioned that because that's what came to mind with you. Like, oh, the vineyard. And I found this little detail in there and we included the notes. So fascinating. Yeah, because Coppola is big in the winemaking industry now, uh, much like uh, one of our other heroes, uh, Robert Mark Kamen, who yes. wrote The Karate Kid. He owns a vineyard. So it's something to aspire to having a, a vineyard one day. Yeah. Geo Vineyard. I'm going to look that up for sure. Now, Sal, as I said in the beginning, I was trying to call it a silver lining, but you put it best. Light, uh, light at, at the, the end tunnel. of the tunnel. Yes, Much yes. better. And here's where this comes into play. Giancarlo Coppola was engaged to Jacqueline de la Fonte, who was pregnant with their baby at the time of the accident. Wow. And looking at the dates, she was newly pregnant. Yes. Entirely like possible. Or entirely possible. Know. There yeah. you go. I think that makes it even more interesting if, if, it's, if maybe she didn't even know she was pregnant at the time. Yeah. But we don't know that. So... Yeah. The baby, Gia Carla Coppola, goes by Gia, was born on January 1st, 1987, a New Year baby, another good luck charm, so. Yeah. And she will turn 35 this New Year. So wow. she's outlived her father already, mm -hmm. who dies at 22. Yeah. And Gia, much like the rest of the family, is in the entertainment industry. Yeah. She has played the daughter of her real life great aunt, Talia Shire, who I didn't mention earlier, is definitely related to uh, Giancarlo, his aunt. And this is, you know, this is Gia's great aunt, Talia Shire. She played her daughter in New York Stories, which is a great film. It's like an anthology film. Like Scorsese does a section and Coppola does one. It's one oh, of those yeah, ones. yeah. I've heard of and, that one. And then there is. The Godfather Part Three, hmm. in which Gia played her granddaughter. Again, I remember the movie vividly. I watched it recently because I was watching Coppola's new cut of the movie. Yeah. yeah. And so you see little girls running around, and she's one of them. Gia was very young yeah. at that point in time. Well, you're well, a big fan. You just got the whole uh, Godfather. Yeah. I got the set. Godfather on Apple. I, find, I wanted to watch uh, them again in all their yeah. glory, their 4K, and wanted to compare Godfather Part Three with the new cut and the hmm. new title. Yeah. Uh, Coda, the death of Mark Michael Corleone. So, uh, which was really good. It was interesting. So, but Gia would also go on and direct. She made a movie called Palo Alto and more recently one called Mainstream. And I'm sure there's many more to come. And the reason this entire Giancarlo Coppola story came on my radar is because I looked at the movie Mainstream on IMDb. It popped up. And I was like, mainstream, interesting. Look at this cast. And, and then there's Gia Coppola. And of course, that you're clicking going, Gia Coppola. I know Sophia. I know Roman. I know, of course, Francis and Eleanor. And that's how I figured this whole thing out. And I mm. was just in awe. Like, wait a second. I never heard of John Carver. If I did, I was young. And this is her, you know, his daughter. And she's excelling in the, in this, in the arts. So it was just like, I had to bring that story here. It is a crime, manslaughter, obviously, poor judgment. Yeah. And it was also a chance to kind of, uh, you know, uh, shed some light on someone, the Coppola that never really got an opportunity, you know? Yeah. 
But you know what, Jason, as, as far as crimes go, I We're do agree with with the manslaughter charge. And I think yeah. that a lot of recent cases, which we don't need to go into, but a lot of recent cases, I think, should at least warrant manslaughter charges. Yeah. And sometimes they don't get off with with no charges, you know, so right. it almost seems like manslaughter is almost not utilized uh, recently, in recent times, you just don't hear about manslaughter as much. And I really think it should come into play and deserves to be come, come into play because what it does is it, it does hold you responsible. Accountable. Yeah. Yeah. You are accountable for this person, person's death. Were it not for you, the person would theoretically still be alive. Therefore, you have to have some penalty yeah. if even manslaughter. And so, no, I do agree with that. At least that. Yeah. I remember hearing about that term in the eighties, you know, you're old enough to hear it. And it was usually a drunk driving accident. Yes. yes it's like yes. manslaughter. And that was like, I mean, manslaughter, it's a, yeah, it's a tough word. It, to me, it scared me to death. Like, oh my God. Well, it has the word slaughter in it. That's yeah, pretty slaughter. gruesome. Slaughter. Yeah. And yeah, I hadn't noticed that it's not around as much recently. I, I guess I'm just kind of, we're discovering crimes as we go. But yeah, definitely relevant here. And and I meant to say this a minute ago, but this is our dedication to Giancarlo Coppola, essentially. I mean, we cover crimes yeah. and we paint the whole picture, but you can see that he was taken from his family, this world far too soon. And a simple judgment, an error in judgment caused that. Just veer right, avoid putting yourself in danger. And yeah, this probably did lead to Griffin O'Neill going down a darker path for sure. I'm not saying it didn't. It absolutely had to impact him. You love this guy, your best buds, you get him killed. You already have issues with your father. Mm -hmm. It's going to put you down another path in life. For sure. Well, it's you either use it to heal. You use yeah. it, you, your pain can help you grow and heal, or your pain can destroy you. You know, yeah. and I think in a situation like this, uh, we see what happened. Yeah. So that's all I got, Sal, on Gia. Uh, sorry, John Carlo Coppola fatal boating accident, 1986. Yeah. Rest in um, peace. Rest, rest in, in peace. peace for sure, John Carlo. I'm absolutely going to check out the vineyard. Yes. We should do yes. that. We should report back to one another on that. I will All make it a point. There. I will with, be honored to have a, a glass yes. from the Geo Vineyard. And uh, I guess until the next crime, Sal. Okay. And um, I'll be ready for that one too. All right. So thank you so much for listening. And please be sure to subscribe to That's a Crime wherever you get your podcast. You can also really help us by giving the show a five-star rating on Apple Podcast. And for all you listeners that enjoy sharing your thoughts, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, send us a direct message, or post a comment on our social media, which is at Just Curious Media. We also highly recommend checking out our other podcast and visiting JustCuriousMedia.com. All right. Great job. Thank you. <laughs>